All the ancient astronomers first posit that the heavenly bodies must travel in regular circular motion. Its endless repetition has a simplicity that approaches the notion of rest and perfection. The fixed stars certainly appear to move in just this way, but a number of them deviate from the motion since they are observed to move contrary to the overall motion of the celestial sphere. These wandering stars are the planets, and the most readily observable one is the Sun. Contrary to the expectation of regular circular motion, the Sun appears to change speed in its motion from west to east over the course of a given year. Thus, a fictitious mean Sun can be calculated according to the positions predicted by dividing the total angular distance traveled by the Sun over the 360 parts of the celestial sphere's circumference. Thus, the ancient astronomers conceived the notion of an eccentric circle, whereby the planets travel according to regular circular motion around a center that is offset from the Earth. This eccentric offset, or eccentricity, produces an observable anomaly between the planet's actual position on its eccentric circle and its mean position, as envisioned traveling the same angular distance around a circle concentric with the Earth. In this eccentric setup, the point furthest from the Earth on the eccentric circle is named the apogee, while the point closest to the Earth is named the perigee. At these two points, the mean Sun and the true Sun line up perfectly. Traveling counterclockwise from the apogee to the perigee, the mean Sun is ahead of the true Sun. Then from perigee to the apogee, the mean Sun falls behind the true Sun. Thus, the true Sun appears to speed up as it goes from apogee to perigee, showing the greatest change in angular distance over an equal period of time near the perigee. This is the greatest movement in the eccentric circle model, where the true sun speeds up and passes the mean sun, while near the apogee it experiences the least movement, as it slows down and allows the mean sun to catch back up. This same behavior can also be modeled by a concentric circle, or deferent, that carries a smaller circle, the epicycle, around its circumference. Now there are three conditions for these models to be equivalent. First, that the radius of the epicycle be equal to that of the eccentricity of the original eccentric circle. Second, that the planet travel round the epicycle in the opposite direction that the epicycle travels round the deferent. And third, that the planet travel round the epicycle at the same speed that the epicycle travels round the deferent. In both cases, the path of the planet is identical, and the greatest anomalistic difference between the true Sun and the mean Sun occurs at 90 degrees, as measured along the deferent from the apogee or the perigee. However, this setup is only able to sufficiently predict the positions of the Sun, but fails to coincide with the positions of the remaining planets, which are deemed inner planets if their circles of motion are between the Earth and the Sun, and outer planets if their circles of motion are beyond the path of the Sun. Ptolemy assumes a planet's status of inner or outer based on the time required for it to return to an identical configuration with the Sun at the same time of year. The longer the period of joint returns would seem to indicate a circle of motion that is further from the Earth. These inner and outer planets display a progression and regression with reference to the backdrop of the zodiac, against which their position is gauged, unlike the Sun, which, though it appears to change in speed, never stops and reverses direction. Of the two models seen thus far, the eccentric is unable to model progression and regression, but it can be achieved with the epicyclic model, if the second and third restrictions are lifted. For inner planets, the planet still travels round the epicycle the same direction as the epicycle is carried round the deferent, but now the planet travels round the epicycle at a different speed. In the case of Venus, the planet makes five circuits round its epicycle, while the epicycle makes eight circuits round the Earth which oddly enough coincides exactly with eight cycles of the Sun passing around the ecliptic. In this way, Venus is never observed to stray more than 45 degrees or so from the mean Sun. But in a marvelous fashion, it progresses ahead of the mean Sun, stops and regresses behind the mean Sun, five times in eight years. Patterns as intricate as the Sun's helix begin to emerge as the model of planetary motions itself progresses. But what about the outer planets? Read on in the Almagest.